Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Y'all good? Yeah. Now, Ms. Hogan is here. Uh, she's at the room. Be, uh, be, I don't know what she's doing. So. <laughs> She's grown. She's a grown woman. So I, I don't care. <laughs> and I don't feel like I owe you an explanation about it. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> all right. So here we go. Y'all good? Yeah, uh, all right. Bless y'all. Thank y'all for y'all's whatever day this is. Uh, we got to be close to the weekend, though. So, uh, <clears throat> so here's how it goes. I've been spending quite a bit of time uh, praying and fasting. See how thin I am? Uh, it, it really is on purpose, not to thin, but praying and fasting. But I guess that happens, too, when you don't eat. Uh, so there's been quite a bit of awesomeness the uh, last few months that the Holy Ghost has decided to let us in on. And uh, so I'm going to try to not be too rough with you. Because uh, y'all are so weak-minded. You just... I don't know, you just want to be coddled all the time. I, and I do feel sorry for you, because you, you just, that is not how life is. Somebody lied to you, man. And, and so I'll try my best not to just run over you. Uh, it, it really is, really, uh, nowadays, my hardest job is not bulldozing people down. Because that's, uh, everybody's so entitled and so weak and so needy. You should be soldiers by now. It, it, whatever hell throws at you, you just should just get up and flip them off. <laughs> and you should just tell them, is that all you got? Lord, I was expecting, I was expecting more out of you. Uh, so I got to somehow, without my wife's red face here, <laughs> figure out how not to bulldoze you too much. So I'm probably not going to be successful. So, <laughs> so yes, we've experienced the same tragedies, trauma, and awfulness that you have the last few months. But when, when uh, what was those guys, Nehemiah, I guess it was, mm -hmm. that God let him out of bondage finally, and the king gave him the right of way to do a job, but the political system and and the uh, and the religious system of his day decided they liked their little niche that they had figured out, and they didn't want some zealot, God-seeking human being to come in and upset the apple cart, because they liked their ways of sin. But God had different plans. So, so what happened was they had to literally work with a trial or a hammer or whatever in one hand and a sword in the other. And that's where we find ourselves now. And so, uh, so I'm probably not going to be very gracious about the political system or the religious system. But I will be gracious to the soldiers of the Most High King. Because I'm one of those. All right. So 
how to how to tell you because uh, I, I I would not consider myself to be have, have been complaining to God about uh, because you work your whole life to be successful, and then when it starts happening, you have to work. That's when you really have to work. Okay, so. So I found myself uh, going to God quite often and saying, look, I know you want me to seek you more. I feel it. I feel the pressure from heaven. And I was already giving him a couple of 40-day fasts a year plus I don't know how many days in a row of every other day fasting. I was, you know, thought I was awesome with that. And, uh, but I started feeling more and more pressure. So I, I just went to him and said, look, uh, dude, uh, it's your fault. Uh, you the one came in and started raising the dead <laughs> and healing the sick. And now I got work and now you're pressuring me to come see you more. How is this going to work out? So I found myself, I guess, in some sort of a dilemma that most of you don't have because you don't seek God in the first place. Ooh. All you do is seek money. So my question to you, how's that going for you? Your God working out Come good on. for you? And I know, he's, I know it's not. I know it's not. Uh, so, okay, so... So I'm, I'm on this worldwide run thing last year. Uh, I, we had just had this big deal in Mexico. They was at it. And it was pretty good to me. We had a good time. And then, you know, I find myself going to be with some famous people. And I had, I, I knew, I remember telling y'all that um, treachery was coming. I remember telling y'all that. There's some sort of evil. Uh, it's come. I remember saying that to y'all. And I do apologize to you. I do. I, I do apologize to you that, <clears throat> that I didn't have it more sorted out for you. So I do feel responsible. Uh, I don't feel myself to be a prophet or some famous word hound person <laughs> but but I too can hear God and raise the dead so but so so I'm going to explain a couple of things and then read a couple of verses and then you'll be spitting mad by then <laughs> it's going to happen just like that <laughs> thanks for the gracias hermana por la te no he probado, pero tal vez está bien. If it's in a McDonald's cup, it's got to be good. Yeah, I, I would not have accepted that green one. So, you notice I was real tactful. I didn't say any names. Please tell Ms. Hogan that. Will you? Thank you. Y'all, you're going to have to see, I'm doing so good. My life is so awesome. Come on. Yeah, and, but once you he start hearing the atrocities and the horribleness of what's been going on around us, you're going to wonder how a human being can stand up under such an attack. Mm. Well, I'm going to go tell you the answer right up front. Jesus is king. It don't matter if millions of dollars are flowing through the door and everything's hunky-dory. <laughs> or it don't matter if they stole all your money like they happened to us at, uh, in the beginning of this atrocity. And um, hell's running over you. No, it's all the same. <laughs> okay. So... I kiss my wife goodbye, you know, it's a normal, I got to go around the world and heal the sick thing. For me, that's normal. For you, that's 
Most of you don't even believe it. And you're still wondering, I wonder if it's real. For you, it's not. You're what's called an unbeliever. So it's not real for you. But for people that are called believers, it's right to walk with the Holy Ghost in fire and run, just run route hell at every corner and turn of life. So, so I find myself over in the northern corner of uh, India, up in right by China, uh, one of the most, uh, one of the most dangerous for Christians areas in the world uh, uh, and they're killing Christians there so that's why I was there uh, that's what you do uh, that's what I do so you know I get there and then I start hearing rumors of some something's been unleashed across the border in China some sort of demon horde has come and started killing people and uh, but I mean there's no cell signal there so no phone signal so we didn't really get this the straight of it until I got back uh, to one of the larger cities and uh, my wife told me that uh, there's been an outbreak of some sort of demoniac things killing folks Wuhan devil and uh, so you know I said irrelevant I must stay she said, well, it's spinning up. I said, okay, thank you for the news. I'll be going back into no sales signal now. I don't want, I don't want any more bad news. Thank you. Uh, so, so it got bumpy out there, y'all, is what I'm saying to you. I found myself at the end of the planet. Uh having to decide if I was going to run like the rest of Christianity come on, come on. or if I was going to stand in the presence of God in hell. Mm. That's awesome. That was what I had the decision of. And I'm in active warfare. I'm, I, I'm not toting a gun, but I don't have to. Right. And, and so it got bumpy out there, y'all. Uh, I'm telling you straight up that I got caught in the open working for Jesus with a new principality that none of us knew about. I did know it was coming, but I didn't know how, what, when, where, and all that stuff. Because uh, I could feel it, but I couldn't, I couldn't pinpoint it. And uh, I don't suppose I know anybody else that could either. So, so. So we decided, I talked it over with the team that was with me, and I told them, I said, now look, I advise you all officially to go to your families. And, and, and every one of them looked at me, because we're sitting in this really nice place, you know, it's a really nice area where I was at, in the Himalayas, it's amazing. And we're up about 12,000 feet, and it's just gorgeous you know and uh, uh, it just don't look like there's that kind of enemy around the environment is lying to me so that's what I got to say to you about your California yeah. mm -hmm. come on tomorrow right. yep. uh, I need you to soldier up Regardless of your environment. Yeah. Very good. Come on. So I decided, you know, I told them, y'all y'all need, I advise you to go home. I already have made arrangements to get you out of this mountain, off this mountain, uh, and get and start you back toward, because it takes about five days to get back to civilization from where we was at. Because of the way you have to hike, you have to then ride in I wasn't riding on a horse, but it was close. And then you had to four-wheel drive out, and then you have to get in, a, in these overloaded buses, and then you have to get to a normal highway, and on and on it goes. But it takes a long time to get back into your world, just like it takes to get out. That's why you don't get out. You like it. 
and it's comfortable to you. And I'm not against you at all. Look at me. I like California sometimes. <laughs> Today's all right. <laughs> Because I don't care about your stonings or anything. I can take that stonings. <laughs> so this makes for good newsletters, you know. Man, I was in California. They stoned me out there. And it wasn't with drugs. Uh, so so I like you. I like you all. Thank you all for letting my wife and I come. Uh, I actually know that heaven wanted me here at this moment in time. So I do know that. Because I actually told him about it. <laughs> and so, so, so I want to tell y'all, this is how it works for me. I told those men, I need y'all to load up, saddle up, and get on out of here. This thing's spinning up negative. And we're not going to be able to stop it. And so these guys looked at me. I've been working with some of them a long time. And they, the, uh, they said, are you leaving? I said, no, I'm not. I, actually, I'm going to stay. But Brother David, what about this? I said, well, I don't have any answers for you either way, negative or positive. I just know that I sought the Lord Holy Ghost for 40 days, and he invited me here on this day. I'm not backing down nor out. And uh, so uh, they said this to me, well, Brother David, then if you're staying, we're staying. And they said it to the man. I made, I, I made him each answer my question. I said, uh, do I need to record this? Are y'all going to be man enough to understand that you're going to suffer the consequences on your own? And so they said, no, we're good. So we kept going, and then heaven showed up. I just wish I, could I had the time to explain to you all the details about the glory of God, and there were thousands of people came, and souls and miracles and it's just everything that you probably would how you could figure out a dream for it to be awesome it was it really was but it didn't none of that stop the negative and i need you to understand there are greater powers at work that don't seem to care about us negative and positive and you need to man up that that's okay that God's in charge. And the reason you are so weak-minded is because you try to control every dead gum thing. And when you, you all of a sudden sort it out, you can't. It, 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 it hurts your feelings and you, you, look, you start breaking down and say, praise the Lord. But Jesus is in charge and if you'll let him do that, he'll take care of you. It don't matter how adverse. Now, I can scare you if I want to. I probably won't. You seem scared enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you know, you got to understand, I like y'all. <laughs> you should see where my enemies, I really cuss them out. I mean, real cussing. It doesn't seem to affect them much, <laughs> but it's still, it seems to emotionally help me more, I guess. <laughs> That's probably what it's about anyway. So. <clears throat> I know y'all want a one, two, three point message with a couple of Bible verses and everybody go home and eat a hamburger and discuss how stupid that message was. <laughs> that ain't how it's going to go today. Sure ain't. Because we finally got out of the, of the mountain. And when we got back to civilization, there was a panic that I haven't seen going on in a while. But it was worldwide, turns out. And so my wife finally got a hold of me and she says, so you need to tell me what you want because it looks like you're going to be stuck over there for a while. And I said, what do I want? I want you to love Jesus regardless of the consequences. 
How you go about doing that, I don't give a flying flip. Well, that's not what I told her, but that's what, <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> like I said, y'all too weak for, for, for somebody being a real human that loves God. <laughs> you just can't take it. I got to treat you like you from California. <laughs> Come on, bring it. And I'm not against y'all, really. I'm not. I just don't agree with you on much. Because <laughs> I love Jesus. Yeah, come on. I don't care if I'm in Texas, Mexico, hail, Jesus is king. Come on. Come on. And I got proof of that now, boy. So we drifted on down to a few places out there where they murdered Christians and I stood up on the mountaintop and confessed that Jesus was king, defied devils and stirred up some stuff and had a good time. Because <laughs> that's what you do. Chennai, one of the places, that's where they killed Thomas. I think it was Thomas. Or was, is he the last one? Thomas. Thomas. Seems like it's the right name. So I'd, when you get out of that, when you fly in there, you go by... Uh, they take you right by the mountain where they beheaded him in a cave. Uh, the the zealots or the enemy. And to this day, Christians will, will, will fight to the death by the thousands to protect that mountain because that's where that man died. That's the wrong thing to fight for. You don't fight for an idol, yo. You fight for Jesus if you ain't going to fight, but you don't do it. There's, there's different ways to fight. <laughs> so so I, don't, I don't care. I, they say, you want to go to the cave? I said, absolutely not. I ain't lost a blooming thing there. <laughs> I don't give a flying flip that man died there. Why should I? <laughs> well, you want me to go and kiss that marble stone that other people have kissed? No, I'm not. <laughs> and yes, all of your Christianity, each one of you have an altar there to that man. All of you do. And I disagree with all of you about that. He would too if he was alive. He'd cuss all of you out just like I do. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, you walk on foot from Jerusalem ch to Chennai, you're going to be cussing. <laughs> That's a long way and it's horrible through there. I'm telling y'all, I know y'all want him flying on a carpet with that other guy that ain't even real. I don't remember his name. He, he was a thief anyway, I guess. But he's one of y'all's mascots. So we got there and they told me, they said, Brother David, they going to kill you. I said, well, that's got to be proven. Let's do this. And got to preach, and heaven, heaven came. Hell got really testy with us. So then we flew up. We stayed alive, and we flew on up to the center of the nation, called a place called Hyderabad. It's as far as I know. I don't know. There's probably larger ministries around. I don't know, uh, but the ones I know about, this guy, he was a real. Really smart individual. He, got, he and his wife both got educated in London, a place called Oxford. Mm -hmm. And uh, he graduated with honors, very famous architect there in London. He built quite a few things for him. And uh, but then, right in the middle of his famous life, God sent an angel to him. Said, what are you doing? This is not what I have for you. I mean, this guy's got millions of dollars, pounds. Famous, wealthy, educated, awesome guy. It just wasn't what God wanted. He said, an angel said, God wants you to go back to Hyderabad and live in the ghetto with the poor. He said, I will not. I made it out. I ain't going back. And the angel said, suit yourself. And he left. 
Now that ain't what you want the parting ways to be with no angel. <laughs> That's not, you ain't, I don't care how powerful you are, you shouldn't have an angel say suit yourself and walk through the wall. <laughs> So anyway, it turned out that the wife got a visitation too, and they talked about it, and they decided to obey God. <laughs> Smart, finally. <laughs> now I'm thinking they might be intelligent, actually. So they go back. I'm, you got to understand now what I'm saying, because the caste system is in effect there, and the rich do not mingle with the poor. It just don't happen. So he moved in with the poor. And the angel of the Lord that had spoke to him showed up. Now they have a million converts. Wow. It's one of the largest ministries I know about. Uh, I've actually seen it myself. I cannot, I cannot tell you how powerful those people are. And they're the humblest. That's like... It's awesome. I like being around them because <laughs> they're not backing down from anything or anybody. And yet they're overcoming poverty and hunger with the presence of God. And I really like that. And so I was with them. And, and um, when this thing really blew up and y'all shut down borders and everything, uh, and, and finally, my wife says, well, this, I don't know how long it's going to last, but I ain't going to see you for a day or two. I said, well, I'll be over here preaching. Love you, Ma. <laughs> that was our conversation. You need me, you know where to find me. And so that's how it went. And then the main guy says to me, this the engineer fellow, who's not that anymore. He, now he's just... He's a, I would consider him a saint of the Lord. He's an amazing guy. He just walked up, this humble man. says, Brother David, I need to ask you one question. Now, I mean, we, the work they do, the work we do is awesome. Together, we make a pretty formidable idea. You want us two together on the same page against the demon. Do you hear me? Yes. I'm telling you, it's the right thing to want. And so he said, why are you still here? That was his question to me. And I looked at him, what? Is my blue jeans offending you or something? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he lives in the ghetto. My blue jeans are not going to offend him. They might steal them from me, but, uh, <laughs> but they're not going to offend them. So... He said, no, David. He said, in the nation of India, everyone has fled. Talking about our kind of people. I said, well, I, don't, I can't speak for them. I can only speak for myself. Jesus invited me here, and until Jesus invites me to leave, I'm not moving. And if I stay here and my visa runs out and I go to jail, then that's how it's going to be. I'm not going to do it. He said, I knew that was right. He said, you want to know why you're standing in my pulpit? It's because of that answer. Now, you need to understand why you need to talk to people. They don't give a fly and flip if you can raise the dead. They don't give a fly and flip how powerful, what American, what nothing. What they care about is you're obedient to the Holy Ghost. And that, that's a true soldier will listen to that. You hear me? You don't need to impress anybody with the way you dress, the way you talk, your education, because nobody is interested. Come on. I can find that cheap mess anywhere, out in the street, anywhere. Come on. And that ain't the way to go, y'all. The way to go is the presence of Jesus. And so about three or four days later, because it, it really did get bumpy on us out there, y'all. I, I admit I felt the fear and the panic. I felt it. But I refuse it. 
The answer is no. Jesus is king. I'm telling y'all, I'm right about this now. And I know that you don't believe I am. That's why you can't do what I can do. And that's why I don't want to do anything you do. Is that clear? And that's not me hating on you. I just don't believe the worldly system is right. I believe Jesus is king. It ain't me not liking you. That's not right. I do like you. But that's not enough to hold me. It takes obedience to the Father for me to stand around. I'm serious. Is it okay if I just talk? Yes. And don't have to be the loud preacher fella. I get enough done by being quiet and smiling now. Because I've actually figured out what's right and wrong in some things. Come on. And I ain't going negative. Jesus is king. Yes. In Jesus' name, mercy. Let it be so and let it be true. So, uh, we got going right about, and I want, I'm not going to go through the whole thing with you because it got, really got rough. It, really, it was real hate panic, fear, politics. Whoa, she's bumpy out there. Well, guess what? That ain't my world. I don't give a flip what y'all do. I'm serious now. You stand there with your little banner and your little cussing and your little have at it. Well, you need to come join. I ain't joining you do nothing. Tell me how that's going to help me. That would help me get shot. I ain't doing that. Now, if it's not for Jesus, me and you going to split the sheets, huh? And you got to hear what I just said to you. And I'll take that into the grave, boys. And I mean that. I'm, I am threatening you. Now, Jesus is king. Not any of this BS that's going on out there. Jesus is king. Telling you, do what you have to. So will I. And we'll see who's standing day after tomorrow. Come on. Shabbat. Because I ended up and found myself something that works. And so... So, but what, what you got to deal with is I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I feel panic. I feel fear. I feel the normal human emotional gamut that you feel. It just matters how you respond to that stuff. I don't owe you an explanation or a response. Neither do I owe hell. The only place I owe in response to is to mercy. Yes. And I'm telling you, that's how it's going to be for me and my family. Miss Hogan gets here, you'll see that little calm, little grandma person. And she's just going to smile at you. I don't want him to do that. I'll just flip you off and move on. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need it. You hear me? Yeah. Look at me. I don't need it. What I need it's found at the foot of Jesus. It's called the mercy of the gospel and the love of the gospel. That's what I need. And I'm telling all of you, and I'm not against any one of you, I'm standing for Jesus. And that makes you look different. You understand? Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm in this room. Now, you got to understand how it is because because of my white skin, you know, and my... Uh, Christianity in my America around most of the world nowadays all, any one of those will get you slaughtered uh, and it's my male white Christian America That's, those four reasons any one of them will get you killed out there in some places now it, it, and there was my fight but that don't make, seem to make any difference you get grouped in anyway and I, I'm, and and that's why we're having most of these troubles is because uh, people were grouped into certain tribes and ideas, uh, whether they wanted it or not. 
So that has brought about some repercussions. So you need to get out of that world into Jesus Come on. where you can actually be free of all that. Yes. Come on. Um, I'm telling you, that's just a good, good counsel. And so I'm, I'm in this room now. The bottom floor, I was on like the 11th floor or something, but the bottom floor has these guns, right? These people with actually live rounds and Constantina wire and all that. Uh, it, you don't get to come in the place without them checking your suitcase. I mean, even though you stay in there, your suitcase, your backpack, your car. I mean, they got dogs. They got, man, it's amazing. It's worse than any airport in America just trying to get a room. And so, I, you know, you get in there and on every floor you had these dudes walking with, with live round machine guns in their hand. And right outside my door, there's a guy standing. He, they bought it, paid him to shoot people so I wouldn't get killed. I never asked them, but they feel obligated to that stuff for, I don't know why. But that's them. That's on them, not me. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> I felt important. <laughs> And so, so here, let me let me taste this tea here. How do you open that? What do you do? You imagine push that little tab back. Back. <laughs> Wait, oh, okay, there he goes. That close enough? You did good, Mom. Where'd she go? That tastes good. That's almost good as Miss Hogan's. You know I have to give her the edge. I have to. So, so look here. There's this dude standing out there, and you got like five locks on your windows and your doors, and you know you're in prison, man. Don't you get it? You call yourself free. That ain't, that ain't nothing free about that. So, so there I am, you know, in there about, it's about three or four days in past when he asked me that question. It, it's okay if I tell y'all the truth, y'all. Can you take it? <laughs> Maybe not, huh? We'll see. So, no kidding, I'm sleeping there. Even under those circumstances, I, you need to sleep a little bit. And so uh, somebody uh, hits me, right, in my room. That, well, that ain't possible. So I raise up, and there's a dude standing there, right? And I'm looking at him. I'm on the bed now. You don't supposed to be in the room. And so I look over at the door, and it's all bolted up. I look over at the windows, and it's still got all them things on it. And I said to him, who are you? He said, God sent me to you. I said, sure enough. Well, now. Because, see, every one of us, I know you want this. You, I know you want that dude walking through that wall and talking to you. I know what you want. You want it proven to you that this stuff is real. Well, me, I don't have to have that, but I seem to get it. I'd just soon have a good night's sleep. Because who knows if he's telling the truth. What if he's really a devil? Because you can't trust none of these things that go through walls. That ain't legal. That's against natural law. So how can it be okay? Don't you understand? To me, it's kind of nervy walking up in my room like that. Saying I'm from God. Are you serious? I don't believe you. I don't I wouldn't believe you if you walked through the wall. So I said, What do you have to say to me? He said, God said, the fire is moving. Move. I said, What does that mean anyway? 
You know, he ain't answering me. They ain't very happy people, them angels. They don't have any pom-poms. They didn't even bring a filet sandwich, fish filet or nothing. Or He just said the fire is moving. Now, I assure you, if God going to go out of his way to send you something through the wall, you should listen. And me, I am the most skeptical one of the bunch. I need proof. I don't care what it goes. Because I know the Bible, and it says that hell can change itself to perceive as a child of light. And so I do not need certain things that other people need. I just need to know what the Bible says. We, we will do that the best we can. I don't need some other stuff. So I called the team on the phone and we got organized and called up the bosses that be in that large ministry and so we all had a big meeting and and they said, you are free of us. I said, okay. So I called Ms. Hogan. I said, I need a, I need a flight out of here. Uh, there's this dude walked through the wall and told me the fire's moving so I need, to, I need to obey it. She said, what did you say? I said, I know, Mom, it, I know, just get a ticket, all right? <laughs> I don't know any of that question. You ask the questions, I don't have an answer. The thing said, the fire's moving, that's all I know, so get me a freaking ticket. <laughs> and I know you want all this spiritual stuff and satisfy my passion of the Lord, Brother Hogan. Well, you don't need to come on a trip with me because I expect you to actually act like a soldier and walk this stuff out without needing any passion satisfied. <laughs> Weak-minded thing. So, okay. So, she calls me back about three or four hours later. I'm in the middle of preaching. She says, there are no, there are no seats. I said, okay, then I'll stay here and preach. That thing was wrong. Now, those things are not wrong when God sends them. You being able to work out your plan, your schemes, your understanding around this stuff is not, that is not what God said. He said the fire's moving, you need to move. That is what God says, then that's how it's going to go. What you see how you feel, uh, the consequences uh, of some of your previous decisions have no effect on the Word of God. I need you to hear me. Jesus is king. And the way we, life happens to us, it's, it's not relevant. God's not going to wrap his word around your scenario. Your scenario obeys him. Period. And I don't have your answer. I need you obedient. And in a minute, it'll all start shifting toward him. And it sometimes takes a minute. But that's not relevant either. Time's not a frame he lives in. That's what we live in. God lives in eternity, and that's how he processes and moves, and that's how we need to change. So, so, is it too complicated? Am I all right? Because I don't see it complicated. I see a, an, intruder, an intruder in my room stealing my sleep. <laughs> Says God sent him. Well, there ain't no seat, so he must not have been God. So I, I told him, I'm going to go back to work. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my job. So I did. I went, did first session, and then now I'm in second session, and this phone is always on on my side. Ms. Hogan has access to me 100% of the time. So, and there's a certain ring that she has that it don't matter what I'm doing, when I hear that ring, you're going to wait. <laughs> and the reason is because... 
We've been, this is our 50th year to be married. My wife. And so I feel like she's probably going to stay. So, so, so I can, I can probably, I need to answer her call. I got at least one of those. That's more than some of y'all got. Weak-minded sucker, Bill. <laughs> We're going to make this, I promise. Shot the bar. So, so anyway, she said, you got to go, and you got to go now. I found you a couple of seats, but you got to go, and it's back there in the back of the bus with the chickens. But get on the bus, David, she said. <laughs> I need you. Well, Mom, I'll try. She said, ain't no trying. You do. God said, so we going to do this. Oh, shuckins. I shouldn't have told her what God said. <laughs> now I got to do it. So, y'all, it was an amazing story. Uh, but, but when I decided to obey the angel of the Lord and the word that came from heaven to us, what I, what I start what what started happening to us was a repercussion that we're still reeling from. I, it was like it ended up being like 118,000 US dollars we lost by one decision. Now, I don't know what you know about money, but that's a bad decision. That you don't business don't run good when you're making those kinds of decisions. Unless you're the U.S. government. <laughs> and then you're expected to do that frivolous stuff. So, 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 so. Uh, well, I could name some other governments, but I'm not. So, so. So how do you recover from, stabilize such a fall? How do you not go under when, when you don't have that much money to lose? What do you do? See, th this is what you want to know because yours, whether it's $50 or a million, you want this answer. I'm telling you, because in your world, if it is a $50 slide that puts you under to you it's the same as a million because your mind is in such a state of broken that you feel the same as that guy does that just lost his millions trying to jump out of a skyscraper you feel the same but I got good news for you if God told you to do something he understood the failure before he told you what to do and he's got a plan. All you got to do is find it. Yes. And that's not easy with him. I know we, that's all we do is say, seek, find God, presence, Jesus, God. We need Jesus in the room. I know what we say, but getting him here is different than how we want it. Come on. Now, So I had to make some decisions because uh, literally got on the last, it was literally, literal, the last plane out of India to the United States. It was the last plane, and I got on it. Literally, we, we, we landed here in uh, San Francisco, and it was literally the last plane allowed into the United States from Asia. Wow. Literally the last plane. So when that angel walked through that wall and said, go now, what do you think he meant? And me getting on the light, you think I knew I could figure this out? Are you? What's wrong with you? You drank too much coffee. You look like that squirrel on that show that drank that Red Bull. You're, the world stopped spinning and you didn't. You didn't. <laughs> Well, my grandkids, that's why I had to watch it because of my grandkids. And so that's why I know about that squirrel. I can't remember his name. They, 
What's his name? <gasps> that is his name. You must be a granddaughter. So, <laughs> so, so, Hammy, that's right. Come on with you. <laughs> Did you draw him and make him or something? It, it could be here. You know, it could be real here where we're standing. Uh, so, so, y'all, look, I finally made it back to Houston. And I thought, thank you, God. I'm in a safe zone. No. I mean, this place is like, it was, it looked like a kicked over anthill and everybody's mad at each other. I mean, it was frightening to move around then. And so finally I made it to Ms. Hogan and that woman grabbed a hold of me. And she said, yay God, she said. I said, woman, have you figured out the math yet? She said, I don't care what the math is, David. I care that I got a hold of you right now. I says, all right. So money failed us. Uh, I couldn't complete ministry. Uh, it was 100% casualty rate on us because I work overseas. And you got 100% of the borders closed. So my job was totally out. Okay. So now you got to make choices. You got to make lots of choices. You got to, oh, that's my son. Now, I almost, almost would answer him right now because he's stuck there pretty good himself. Okay, so, but I'm not. So, uh, okay, the money went under. The, our job got totally 100% lost because they won't let us out. If I was planning on staying out there, I should have stayed in India where I could at least sneak across the borders because borders are porous on land. You can move. Okay, so, uh, okay, so you lost everything you know. Now, when I got back, to our office in Texas, most of my team was there uh, because I had invited them to come to, to let's sort this out. Let's sit down and have a powwow. Because we can't, we, before we, we're not people that fire off rounds unless we know our target. Do you hear me? It's a waste of ammunition. I don't need to show you or prove to you anything. If you are that shallow, be that shallow. Jesus is king. And we need to sort out what's going on. And it ain't normal no more. And around us, all of a sudden, the, the Texas government, this, the, we, they went, I'm telling you, they went, it was militia. It, they went, look, they, they told us, you can't even go out of the county. And if you do and we catch you, it's a $1,000 fine per person, per event. But the problem is there's not a Walmart or a Target. or there, we, we, don't, we got one little grocery store in that county where our office is. So the world we were used to is evaporated as well. So you're going to have to make choices. So what we decided, I sat down with my wife first, and I wrote down on paper everything that we, 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 we're losing. It's gone. It's gone. Now, we've been able to recover most of it back, talking about all of it, from money to everything coming back. But... Not all of it. But to do that, you got to have patience. And you are not known for your patience. You are known from this. Give me. And I want it my way. And you put your little by God fist up. Oh, you're a brat. Somebody didn't whoop your butt good enough. 
And what's going to happen to you is hell's fixing to whoop your butt. Because this entitlement and by God stuff is over, y'all. The church is going to have to rise in faith and anointing. And you and your way is, 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 is gone. And, and I know you want that. And you won't come here and get some kind of injection so you can keep that going. I ain't going to give it to you. <laughs> I don't owe you uh, anything. Now, what I owe is mercy. So I told Ms. Hogan, I said, listen to me, woman. I said, the feces has hit the oscillator. <laughs> Everything has tainted. What, what we don't know, I know that ain't normal preaching, but, uh, and I'm going to get really ridiculed over it. Uh, let me think about it. Yeah, but I can take it. Do me a favor and give me free publicity. Because I don't do that thing y'all do. That, uh, I don't know that invisible thing y'all all believe is God now. Uh, I don't do that. So, so, I said, woman, it's on like Donkey Kong. She said, all right, David. She said, I feel nervous. She said, I, I feel shortness. I feel panic. I feel, I said, I know. So do I. I said, well, let's go ahead. Just take my hand. I'm right here. Let's just go ahead and calm down and take a nap. What do you think? She said, that's a great idea. <laughs> so that's what we did. And then when we woke up, everything was better. Anytime old people get rest, it's awesome. <laughs> it's so awesome. I don't know. Oh, the world's falling apart. Well, really, I didn't notice. I was just tired. I apologize. <laughs> So, y'all, I know I hadn't read any verses, and I probably went over time and everything else by now. I just need you to understand we're going to make this. Yeah, come on. I don't care what hell dishes up, because this was nothing more than an hors d'oeuvre. The main course is on its way. Right. It's coming, and it's going to be rude, and it's going to be regular, and it's going to not be awesome. But we're not going to worry about that, and we're going to worry about how to find Jesus. Because Ms. Hogan and I made the decision after our short nap, because old people don't sleep long either. So, <laughs> so <laughs> But it was awesome, actually. And uh, I, I said to her, listen to me, woman. We got this. She said, how can you say that? I said, we got this. I, but we've lost everything. I said, we did, I know, you're right. What you're seeing is right. What your eyes see, it's actually the truth. But what God said, he said the fire's moving. None of this matters. So we got to fix our heart to match where the fire's going instead of what the, what's happening around us. She said, how do you propose to do that? I said, I don't know that yet. So... Anytime I lose, we lose our way, my answer is always lay on the carpet until we find it again. So that's what we started doing, y'all. We decided, because I had complained to God about needing a few days off so I could seek him, well, he provided it to me. And so I chose to believe that it was the goodness of God that got me in this idea where I could lay on my face. I lost my job, so I might as well pray. I can either do that or go sign up for unemployment and be mad with the rest of them. I'm telling y'all, you can do like the world, and you can be like the world, because most of you are still the world. You are not any different than your neighbor. You just may not drink as much, and you may not hit your wife and kids as much. But you still, they can't tell any difference in you. So that makes you one of them. And so we got to be different. We need to seek Jesus. It's time 
So things went sideways and kept going sideways, and then I started losing. COVID hit Mexico, and I don't know what you know about unprotected people. Oh, Indians that I work with, they're bottom of the food chain, and so they get the leftovers, and that's where hell starts. So I started losing people. So we literally were... Silar, a shovel in our hand, digging graves, and a sword in our hand, fighting hell. This is literal. Hundreds of our people have died. And I can't stop it. Okay, so I have faced the facts that I need Jesus. That's what I'm telling you. I'm not going to be able to come up with a plan that's going to turn this. You're not either. What you need is Jesus. What you need is Jesus. That's what you needed in the beginning. That's what you need now. That's what you're going to need tomorrow is more of Jesus. You don't need more government help. You don't need more money. You don't need less money. You need Jesus. Okay? All right. And I come to that conclusion because I didn't have another one. I lost all options, and I, that is a horrible place to, to be, but it's at the same time the best place to be, because if you'll make your options Jesus, your world will all of a sudden start turning back away from what hell wants it to be, toward what God wants it to be. Are you understanding or not? So... Uh, Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Muchas gracias. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, está dulce, está sabroso, gracias, muy amable. Okay, so, um, what it gave me was a free ticket to my work. Okay, now, because the way things went for me, me as a human, God had put me out in the continents to, to help ministries get traction, stability, because I can do that. That's what I do for a living, is, is I take broken things and fix them, and they work, and I, and I like it, and I'm good at it, so, so, so I like it, see? So now the whole world's taken away, and so God, but, but the, the president of the United States, the prime minister of Canada, and the president of Mexico, they closed the borders permanently. Okay, so we're here, here most of us are stuck in Texas, and we're, martial law is in place, and uh, uh, so this is uncomfortable as it can get. Unless they come in your house and you count how many heads are in there and there's too many and then they, unless that's what they start doing, which is possible. With what I've seen the last few months, it's possible. So, so, and I don't, but I don't care. Look at me. You think I care? I don't care. <laughs> if they come in my door, they're going to get preached to and they get born again. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> I do not care. They will get fed and preach Jesus to you. I don't care what their agenda is. What matters is what mine is. I, I don't care, y'all. Look at me. I don't care. So, so my, uh, we decided as a team, we need to get home, Mexico. So my son, Jody, told me, he said, Dad, I got to go. I got this, 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 and this, my paperwork, this. And I said, all right. I said, but you understand the borders are closed. I said, I do not want you firing up on these people. They are not the enemy. Their rules and regulations, I don't give a flip about. They are not our enemy. Our enemy is different than these people. And uh, so Jody said, got it, Dad. So him and a couple of other hands go to the border. Now, what I'm fixing to tell you is beyond bizarre, Okay.
I don't know how we ended up like this, but God is, I don't know, he's amazing. He knew it the whole time. And when you find his plan, it's, a, it's just, oh, my God, look at this. What? <laughs> it is so awesome when you finally bump it. You know, it's like the saying, the old blind sow finally found an acorn. See, y'all don't even know what a sow is. California, wake up. It's a hog, you knucklehead. <laughs> And an acorn is a nut that grows on a tree. And a blind hog needs to eat. <laughs> so it's a good thing when they find acorns, what I'm saying. Okay, so. So this is how it went. My son Jody packs up his junk. You know, we, we are not gypsies and vagabonds, but even though it looks like it sometimes. <laughs> we move through the planet uninhibited. No, you can't stop us. We're sons of God, and we actually believe that. Even though sometimes one border, one barrier happens, you look for a new one. and Because I'm telling you, everything is porous. Men do their best to lock it all down and shut you up and put you in prison. But I got news for you. Heaven sets you free. So men cannot put you in prison. So let it go. Jesus is king. So my son, there's three, three of them, caravan, rolls up to the thing, and there had no traffic because the border's closed. Rolled up to the American border in Brownsville, Texas, uh, and the guy says, border's closed. My son says, yes, sir, thank you. And just kept, and they, because America, on the American side, they don't care if you go over there and get turned around. They want their $3.85 for crossing a bridge. Do you understand? It's just the way governments run. They want money from you. So he crosses over into Mexico and gets to the Mexican side and immediately, you know, pull him in. He gets out, and the lady, this lady guard, she walks up, immigration lady, she goes, uh, the border's closed. My son said, yes, ma'am, it is. She said, well, wh why are you here then? He said, this is my home. She goes, your home? You're a wet old man. You're a wet old man. Aquí no es su casa. You're a white guy. This, this ain't your house. And my son says, uh, pues, yeah, it is. Actually, I'm immigrated, and I've been living here for my whole life. She said, let me see your papers. And when she, look, what's this? We have a credential. Uh, Y'all all get mad because governments make you do this and that and other. Dude, lose it. Who cares? You need to live amongst them like one of them, but you're not one. You need to be hiding in front of them. Hear me or not hear me? And I'm talking about with credentials and such. Uh, and so this lady, the first thing she hit was his immigration card, which that's, you know, it's legal. That makes him a citizen. All right. She said, this is good. And then, but then she picked up the second credential, which is his preach. We have a preaching card given to us by the federal government of Mexico. Uh, and she said, Son ministros evangelicos. Y'all are gospel ministers. My son says, Pues si. Now, watch what she said. The government of Mexico has deemed your kind of people essential. Now, all right, that essential word has got bad taste with everybody in this room. I know it. I know that. Because many people lost their job. I did. I lost overseas. I'm not essential overseas. But in Mexico, because I went there and I immigrated and I lived there and we healed the sick and they know us. The government has decided because we can go into villages and heal the village as essential to their government. You need to realize who you are in God. You are essential. It's just the blunt of it. You, you don't feel it, 
People have told you you're not. They've, they've cursed because some Christians are making a fool of themselves and doing ridiculous stuff. That's not me. What they do, I don't care what they what, Go, do, be knucklehead. I don't care. I don't even have an opinion. I just ain't going to join you because that ain't got nothing to do with dying for the gospel. That's got to do with your opinion. So I'm out. Clear? All right. So, and I don't know what, what that means, but let me tell you what this says. Can I do that now? Because So we have been free. Look, we go down to Mexico for one or two months, and then we come out to replenish supplies and so forth and do what we do. And we get, we cross back from Mexico, get to the American side, because we also have global entry here, century. See, there's like four things that we're hooked to that's government that gives us free entry in the United States regardless of the consequences. Then y'all don't even know about those programs and ideas. And, and you just want to curse everybody when all you need is a $100 for five-year credential that will let you move around. Who cares if they want money? Give it to them. Get your credential, knucklehead. You want to work? Work. There's ways to work. There's also ways to be a baby and weak-minded and, and needy. And I choose not to be that guy. I choose to be a stubborn, powerful <laughs> soldier. Ignore the consequences. Jesus is king. Woo! When, that, when we got back to the American side, the guy, actually that was a lady as well the first time, she looked at my thing, because they don't even look at passports, driver's license, you have a global entry card, that's all they want, because you're what's called a trusted citizen. By the FBI, the CIA, the Homeland Security, everybody has been through your goodies. And you've been found to be a non-threat. And that's who you need to be. Your threat needs to be against hell. Right. I'm just giving you some good advice. Shaka Baba. Let it go. Jesus is king. Shaka Baba. Now, let's read a Bible verse and act like we're a Christian deal. <laughs> we're not going to fool anybody. They know we're not. So go to Jeremiah, that old crying guy, the weeping prophet. So let's just look at it. We okay? That's good. You all right? You sure? I just want to do this. And there's some more stuff. I didn't make it to it, but we'll, we'll get to it another time if we, if we get a chance. If we don't get a chance, then I'll go eat filet fish. <laughs> I say that because he did. Holy Ghost, <laughs> it will surprise you how I'm not going back down. Do you hear me? Look at me, son. I'm not bowed. I'm just not going to do it. You understand how popular I could be and how much money I could have if it's just a couple of things I just curb, just a little. Mm -hmm. No, nah, that ain't right. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go what this says right here. So let's just go over here in the Old Covenant. Most of y'all have lost that. You don't even carry nothing but a New Testament around anymore. <laughs> Too hard to read. Actually, you're right. I don't like it either. <laughs> but they call it the Bible, so I have to read it sometimes. <laughs> but I do have it in Amplified. You okay with the Amplified? All right. It lets guys like me understand it better. A little thicker in the front, some of us, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. So, Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1 in the Amplified. Uncompromisingly righteous. Now, how come that's the first two words? <sighs> Go figure. Rigidly just are you, O Lord. 
See, and every one of you are trying to figure out how to compromise this gospel to make your friends like it. And it turns out God's just not that way. The first two words, look at that, uncompromisingly. You compromising, you're not listening to God. You don't compromise this. This is your stand. So let's see, see what it says. When I complain against and contend with you, because see, I, I don't like, I don't like it because the angel walked through the wall and said the fire's moving. So I tried to obey, right? And I obeyed and I left and I got out of my schedule and I, the whole thing fell out from under me and I lost my job. And 118 or 20 thousand dollars. And friends, and on and on and on goes the list because I would not. I wanted to be obedient. I wanted to try to be right in the sight of God. And if he's going to go through the trouble to send me an angel, and it turns out it really was one, I should do my best to obey whatever he said. Okay, so, so look what, it, what it is. I complain against and contend with you, yet, I, yet let me plead and reason the case with you. See, th this I want you to understand that there's people thousands of years ahead of us that had the same problem out of God that you have it. He just, it just seems like that the wicked prosper more than the just. And they have better benefits and more of them. And they always win at stuff that we know we're supposed to win at. So that's the first question. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? And you go, in the name of Jesus, that's going to change in my world. Well, I'm going to probably tell you, you probably got about 30 or 40 years of that not working for you. Why don't you change how you pray? Why don't you pray the blessings of God over your enemies like the New Testament says? And you might see some change in your world. Bless those that hate you and persecute you for righteousness sake. And it says right here, next thing, why are all they at ease and thriving who deal treacherously and deceitful? You don't have to go very far outside the door to find that. It, this is current, y'all. This ain't 5,000-year-old stuff. Mm -hmm. These are valid questions today. Right. All right, let's keep on going. Why are all they at ease and, and thriving who deal with you, deal very treacherously and deceitful? Verse 2, you have planted them. What? You're going to have to understand that God's plan is going to happen regardless of how you feel about it. Every generation that there's ever been, I've been in... I've been at this a long time. I'm an eighth generation preacher now. L listen to me. Every generation has had these wonders, these questions. It really does matter how you respond to this stuff as to how your outcome's going to be. And your family. And your friends in church. So I'm telling you, I'm right about this. So, so... Look what it says. You planted them. Yes, they have taken root. Yes, they grow. Yes, they, they're bringing forth fruit. Everywhere you look, hell's prospering. Say yes, I know that. And yes, I don't like it. Say it. And so I'm going to draw my gun and go fight them. Well, you knucklehead, that's what they want. Stop it. Put your gun down. There's a day for it, but not today. Put it up old and take the bullets out of it. You don't need it. What you need is to obey the Holy Ghost. You good? Noticing you, I was sitting to watch you. <laughs> and it says, You are near in their mouths and but far from their hearts. Can't you say that's everybody almost you know? Come on, this is not new. This problem is ages old and, and it seems new to us because it's just now happening to us and we're recognizing it. Actually, the problem is you're actually recognizing it. It's always been there. You're just waking up to some, you're sniffing the air and it's got stuff in it you don't want to smell. Yep. 
That's a true statement. And you don't even want me talking about it. But I am going to get in your goodies here. I'm going to crawl up in your affairs. You ready? Because <laughs> we got to fix this. And we start here. This is where we start. Yes. And we start on our face to the mighty one, the holy one of Israel. And if I get a chance to talk some more, I'm going to share some. Boy, boy, the, as soon as I ignored the fact of all of that loss and started going toward God, who do you think showed up? You think God showed up? No, the enemy comes first. You have to be discouraged. You have to be knocked off the trail. You have to be sidetracked. You have to be distracted. You have to be. Because you will win if you stay on your face. But if they can distract you and get you up and let you be whatever it is you want to be. <laughs> All right, look. Verse 3. But you, O oh Lord, you know, you understand Look, my devotion, look, everybody's going to proclaim their goodness. You hear me? I don't deserve this. The odds are probably how you don't. But it don't seem to change the fact that it's happened to all of us parejo. Yeah. Across the board. It's happened to everybody. Those thousands of souls, you understand, that would have been saved in, in the year of 2020. If I was a, where I was supposed to be in them miracles that would have happened, right. I have a hard time with that. Because I'm devoted to God. <laughs> and it would have happened. So let's don't go there. Let's don't bite into that anger and that frustration. Let's go back and get on our face. Right. And let's just let God work that out. Let's go ahead and let his plan be yeah. successful. What is his plan? I don't have a clue. Apologize. I told you all that at the beginning. I don't have that. I don't know what his plan is. If I knew, I, I'd buy into it more. I, I, but I'm just like you. It's complicated, and I can't see it, and shuckings. But I wouldn't say that if I wasn't here. I'd have said something way stronger. You understand? Heaven knows how I talk, and he's all right. Look at this. Verse 3, it says, you see me, and you try my heart toward you. Look, I reckon I've been at this a while, and I reckon I ain't never run into a good person yet. The one you want me to see seems all right, but the real you, uh, we ain't worth salt. And I actually know that. I never will tell you I'm a good person. But I am devoted to what I think is right. Yeah. And my heart is really trying to find Jesus in an answer. Amen. That's truth. Just like this guy. <laughs> he was mad about this. It ain't right. You're absolutely right. It ain't right. And if we knew God like we're supposed to, we could change it. Yeah. We could change the environment. We, this land would be so blessed. Yeah. And it wouldn't matter what hell tried. And that is a true statement. So to me, it seems like the buck falls on us. It's our fault. So that means more prayer, more fasting, more submission to the Holy Ghost, more meditating the scriptures, more trying to figure it out instead of complaining yeah. and cussing about it. Right. Look what it says. Oh, Lord, pull these rebellious ones out like sheep for the slaughter and devote and prepare them. Do you, everybody in this room has said that. Kill them, God. And you may not have said it like him or me, but your heart says it. It's uncomfortable living like we're living now. It ain't awesome. And every one of us have an attitude. We may not show it, but it's in there. And the, what hell wants is you distracted by that attitude. Yeah. Hell wants you off course. Hell wants you not seeing the truth. And the truth is Jesus is king. Yeah. It don't matter what's going on. Yeah. And I'm right about that. Mm -hmm. That money we lost has been recovered. That, uh, that work we lost. Dude, I went down into Mexico and I got out there with my brothers. And I'll tell you, so many people have been saved. Miracles are flowing. We're digging graves and burying our friends. And... It's horrible, and yet life is going on, and Jesus is abundantly a bl a blessing the place. I don't know what to say to you. It's complicated. It ain't awesome most of the time, but it, it's happening. So what are you going to do? 
You think your cussing and spitting is going to change it? No, what will change it is, is bowing together, seeking the face of the great one. L look what this says here in verse, uh, whatever verse it is, four. How long has the land got to mourn and, and the grass and the herbs of the whole country wither? Look, dude, we're running out of stuff. Things are happening. There's more hungry people now and there's more food being given. I know I'm out there. And it says right here, through the wickedness of those who dwell in it, the beasts, the birds are consumed, are swept away by drought. Men mocked. Men mocked me. He shall not live and see the final end. But I want you to look at verse 5 now. This is not, what the, ver this is not the verse you want to hear. You want to hear... Jesus loves me, this I know, for my Bible tells me so. Little one, to him belong. They are weak, but he is so strong. That's what you want to hear. Let's read what this says. Is that all right? Verse 5, the Lord rebukes Jeremiah. Wait a minute, I'm, I, don't you understand my, my life is bad enough? I don't need another rebuke. <laughs> Didn't you hear the questions coming out of the man's mouth in the beginning of this chapter? They were living in a rough time. Well, God's answer is surprising to me. He says these words right here. If you have raced with men on foot and wearied, grown weary and tired, what are you going to do when the real war gets here? Don't you understand you live in a land of peace, even though there's turbulence everywhere. There ain't a, there ain't a city or a county that don't have some sort of awfulness that we didn't have just 10 years ago or something. And I do see that. I, my eyes are not closed to that. But you still can put on whatever you want to and go and break the law and come in here and sit too close. Right. <laughs> and you're going to get away with it and you're not going to be fined. And most of you are not defiant. I'm not. Look at sitting right here. I don't care. I don't care what they want me to do. If I have to dress up like a mummy so I can preach, I'm going to do that. I don't care. I am going to take the vaccine. I got a, a little yellow card by the WHO. Without that yellow card, it's a uh, shots thing. I got 20 shots in 2020 just so I can go preach and go into nations that are close to people who won't do it. Just so I can go preach the gospel. I don't give a, I don't care. What has to happen, I'm going to obey as best I can so I can preach the gospel. I don't care. You say, you're compromising. Really? And you sit home all day and, and flip off the TV. You're amazing. You're absolutely amazing. You're just amazing. And like I'm going to listen to you. The TV don't hear you. Neither should I. Actually, the TV might be listening. But look what it says. The Lord re rebukes Jeremiah's impatience. So I have come to see that we're an impatient bunch. We're just like Jeremiah. That's good company to be in. But you got to be able to take the rebuke like he did. If you don't claim it, claim it all. And it says right here, if, if, if you raced with men on foot and you tired out, then how are you going to compete when the horses get here? If you take to flight, listen to this, in the land of peace, that's where you live. Y'all live in the land of peace. And I know it's at war almost in several areas. You brought that on yourself. You steal land from people in a minute, they're going to get strong and take it back. 
You curse people long enough, they'll get mad at you. What, what do y'all say? Hold on, hold on. I'm just saying. And it says right here, look. What will you do when you tread the tangled? Listen, listen to this. I live in this. Th this phrase that I'm fixing to read to you is my home. The tangled maze of the jungle where the lions live. That's where I live. That's why I seem so way bizarre to you. Because this is normal for me. And I'm all right with it. You see me all right? It's uncomfortable, yeah, because I was planning on it being more peaceful here in y'all's world so I could have it easier. But look what you did. You let hell come. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you let the lions out of the cage. What's wrong with you? And now you're complaining about it. Stop it. It's going to get worse. I need you to be able to run with the horses and the lions. I need you to figure out how to get out of this tangled maze. It's called, in this Amplified, it calls it a tangled maze. A tangled maze of jungle haunted by lions. And watch this. In the swelling and flooding of the Jordan, there ain't any time you turn on your weather channel or your, your international news that there ain't a flood happening somewhere. At like a while ago, a 7.3 earthquake hit Japan. There, there ain't no end to it. Things are ramping up. And you're the very ones that caused it. God, send Jesus to this place, please. Well, the end of the world, you need to read what that means. It's awful. And you should have waited 20 years till we was all gone. <laughs> Why couldn't you give me 20 more years? I'd have been out of here and you didn't do that end of the world thing. I need you to wise up, wake up, understand. You're wearying yourself with these footmen. Horses are on the way, and so is a tangled maze of jungle and lions and harshness and on and on. It's going to go in the entire world. It's going to happen, and you're not going to stop it. There's some plan in play that we don't know about. But I do know a verse for you. It's not coming. It's either Zephaniah or Zechariah. I don't like either one of those guys. <laughs> God, those guys. You hear how they talk? They're horrible. <laughs> they actually want me to be a Christian. What's wrong with them? <laughs> Shoot. I can't remember right now, but do you mind if I take just a second and close up with uh, looking for this? Just a second. I can't remember if it's Zephaniah. It might be Zechariah. Seven, eight months of Darius' anger was fathers on the turn of the letters. I need to call Jody and ask him, my son. I'm gonna find it for you for the next session if I get to talk. Then I will read it to you. And what it's saying is. How do you know that God won't hide you in the midst of evil? See, your reaction proves to me that you believe evil has power over you. You cannot allow evil to have power over you. You don't know God won't hide you. I have walked through this planet where men with machine guns, I walk right by them just like this, these weights right here, and they're looking for me to shoot me, and I walk right by them, and they never see me. You don't know God won't hide you. He loves you. You are the apple of his eye. When you look in those apples at Walmart and all of a sudden you see one, that's who you are. <laughs> that's who you are. And you say, yeah, but what if? Yeah, but what if what? God's lying to you? I think me and you need to go to the woodshed and I need to stick, not you. Somebody needs a whoops. God don't lie. You can rear up all you want. You can educate, because I'm educated myself. I have three degrees. Bring it. I choose the swamp over the education. 
shut up. I need us to repent. You good with that or not? Yeah. Stand up and let's do some of it then. I'm not mad at you because the reason I'm wanting to be strong with you is because they want me to be. But not that. God wants me to be. God wants me to tell you the truth. God wants this. God wants you to be protected living in an actual bubble in evil. God wants you to understand that the lions in the maze have no power over you. The maze, the tangled web of the jungle has no power over you. The horses have no power over you, nor the men army has no power over you. Jesus is king. I'm building a prayer center over there in our office in Texas right now. Uh, and, and these engineers come out. They, they ask me, what are you doing? Do you understand the times? I said, times have no effect on me. I said, I don't want anybody coming from out of state. I want every shovel, every electrical outlet, every conduit, every light bulb. I want everything done by people in the local economy so they can feel the goodness of God coming from us. Do you understand that? We are not like others. We have been bought with a price. His name is Jesus. And I am right about this, y'all. And, and I, I and my wife went through COVID. It's bumpy, buddy. I and my wife lost all this money. I and my wife, oh, I can't, I'm, I, we buried one of our best preachers the other day, 25-year-old young man, just got married, first baby on the way, and we had to bury him. Don't talk to me about rough. I know rough. And, uh, but I choose to believe that God's with us. He saw it from the beginning. He knew this was all going to happen. It's us that believed we had it figured out and thought it was a different way, and it's not. Hello? I said, hello. I need you to wake up. Please, wake up, wake up. California, wake up, California. Don't be sleepy. Wake up. My wife just told me a while ago, David, you're not affected by lack of food, sleep deprivation. Nothing affects you. I said, no. I'm a son. She said, I'm a daughter, but I need to sleep, David. <laughs> That's exactly how the conversation went. I said, well, sleep. I got to go. <laughs> That's true. That's exactly how it went. She might be fussy with me about telling you about Nemo. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I bless you. I'm not here to curse you. I am here to wake you up, though. I really believe y'all are good folk. How about that? I wouldn't waste my time on you if I didn't think so. Because it is a waste of time throwing your pearls before swine. I don't view you as swine. I view you as sons and daughters of Zion. How about that? But you don't know me. Yeah, I, don't, I probably do, actually. <laughs> you're a human and you're breathing, right? Well, then I probably know you. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. We got this. We got this. We got this. I just wish you would have seen me feeding my wife with a spoon for 22 days. I was just holding her head because she ain't going to live. I just wish you could have seen me feeding her, telling, commanding life into that woman. I just wish you would have seen it. It would have impressed you. What impressed me is when I went in there and she wasn't in the bed. I thought, oh, no, they done come and took her. I thought the angels done took her away from me. And then I found her in there sitting in her prayer chair. I said, what are you doing, woman? You scared me. She said, it's on you. You oughtn't to be scared, she said. I said, but my care for you. She said, it's too much. You should care for Jesus, son. I said, Mom, don't preach to me. <laughs> I said, what are you doing? She said, I was laying in there dying, and I just felt like getting up and coming in here and praying in tongues. And I just looked at her tears just started running down my face because mercy done healed my wife. That's amazing, y'all. I'm telling you. you ah. 
That's a big deal. I'm telling y'all, it's a big deal. Mercy just walked in there and didn't ask me for permission or nothing. And they know I have a 4570 rifle laying on my side of the bed. They know it. They come anyway. <sighs> I bless y'all. Hear me? I bless you in the name of Jesus. I understand that things are a little bumpy out there. Well, it was forecast. That's all I know to say. Jesus. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Take a breath. Everybody in this room, take a breath. I need you to calm down a little bit. All right? Please. Please, hear me. Just, just calm down. Come on now. We need peace. We don't need to ramp up anymore. We need a little bit of peace. We need healing. We need healing in our mind. Say, mind, mind. Be, healed. be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Say, body, body. Be, healed. be healed. In Jesus' name. Spirit, Spirit. Be, healed. be healed. In Jesus' name. Come on, Holy Ghost. See, a few days ago, I think it was last November, I was over there. At, uh, uh, I was in Pennsylvania. I was in this place. It was packed out. It was so against the law. Because <laughs> that whole northeast up there is red, you know, and purple, and they mad. And, but there was like a thousand folks up in that room. That, we was all supposed to go to jail over that. <laughs> I, was, I was there. I kept hanging on to my mask thinking, I better get this thing ready because they've been a bust through the door with guns. I'm going to say, dude, they made me do it. They made me do it. <laughs> and, and that, it, y'all, this, this happened to me. I want you to know how awesome your God is. Look at this. I'm up there with these big shot hands, you know, and they are important people. Uh, you know, and, I, and this little old boy walks up there, you know, and I'm the best great grandpa in the world. So them little kids are welcome, right? So that little boy, he walked up to me like this. <laughs> and so I looked at him, you know, I rubbed the little head and that. And I brought him over, let him hang, hang on my leg a minute, you know. And then I started doing what I do, and he started doing what I do, and I noticed it, so I was doing it more, you know. <laughs> you know, old people like me ain't supposed to be able to move like that. <laughs> and, uh, but I can, so. And so I was dancing around, he was dancing with me, and so then it dawned on me that I probably was set up, you know. So I asked him, where's your parents? And I turned around, and there's these Amish people standing there. And God's blessed me, I work well with those Amish and Mennonites. And so I walk over to them, I said, that's your boy? Yes, sir. I said, well, Why'd y'all send him over there? I know you did. Why'd you do it? Well, Brother David, about four or five years ago, we was in a meeting with you, and that little old boy was bent all up, crippled. And you put your hands on him and held him, and we carried him home. Three or four days later, we hear somebody playing with toys. We go in there, and the little boy's up healed. You hear me? We got this, y'all. I just couldn't believe it. I just looked at that little old boy. I went over and took his hand, and I just I don't know, three days, I was just dancing with him. I, it wasn't anybody else around but me and him. It's just awesome. Now, I want you to know that I can see the negative. I choose to walk in the positive. I need you to make that choice, because, and it'll take a minute to, to stop the flow, because if you're walking in negative, it's still going to be trying to push you, but you can you keep turning in a minute you're going to be turning against it and then you'll walk out of it and things will be better hello hello shut the bata bata come on mercy heal us come on mercy heal us touch us see y'all don't know y'all don't know but we also got blowed down by a hurricane 100 mile an hour straight line ground winds you have no idea what that means. I'm a pilot. That means you dead. That's what that means. <laughs> it, gosh, it was bumpy. My wife was there. I was gone preaching. 
She called me on the phone. I need you, boy. Uh, and I heard the tin rattling. I said, you don't need me. <laughs> There's a little bit bigger power you need. <laughs> Man, it tore us up. You have no idea. I, some of, some of y'all's world is going to seem a little bit a little calm after you listen to some of the stuff we've been through this year. It's been rough, boy. But look at me. I'm all right. I'm telling you, we got this. Yeah, but your place got blown. I know, but you just go out there, pile up a pile, burn it, and go to the store and get some more and nail it down because another storm's coming. <laughs> nail it the best you can, but there is another storm coming. You'll be all right until the next one gets there. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. And I know it sounds flipping and off the cuff. It's not. It's horrible. My wife was there till I got back. No electricity, no, no sewage, no water, no nothing. Everything got destroyed. And then when I got there, still five more days. Look, it don't matter. Look at me. We all right. It'll be okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, it'll be all right. You just got to be able to trust Jesus and not your surroundings. And I speak that over you. I speak blessing over you. I speak health over you and healing. And I speak consequences of heaven over you. In the name of Jesus. What do you want to do right now? What do you want to do? You want to wait till the season and pray for everybody? Or you wanna, what do you want to do? Okay, perfect. Look, look, y'all, I'm not, you see me, you see me, uh, dude, I'm, I'm nearly 70 years old. I will be in a couple of months. And, and it's a few days ago I ran my 50th marathon. Woo! Look at me, look at me. I just don't get it. I don't, I, I don't get it. I choose not to get it. I'm saying there ain't nothing from the top to the bottom. I'm healthy. You better be quiet. You better knock on wood. Why? You think I'm supposed to do witchcraft like you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> no, I don't knock on wood. I bow my face to the heavens. What's wrong with you, knucklehead? <laughs> my wife and I are, are experiencing our, this is our 50th year. And in a couple of days, we'll have our anniversary thing. And, and I wanted to run my 50th marathon in this 50 years. It all matches. You know, it's all awesome. I'm telling y'all, come on, we got this. Look at me. Look at me. Ha! And, and as smart as you are and as awesome as you are, if you would just get a little sense about you, you'd be way better than me. I'm telling you, I wouldn't even been in the pick of the litter. God picked. Now look, might have been the runt once, not anymore. <laughs> now I'm bad to the frickin' bone. <laughs> you made a mistake. You had me down once. He should have killed me then. <laughs> I told y'all to pray that I don't get healed. Now look, done got healed. Shabba. And the math is eight and a half years, 50 marathons. That ain't right. <laughs> that, that ain't right. There ain't nobody does that. You're right, they don't. That's why they're all sick. Shaka ba todo bo bo. It's right here. And guess who my partner was when I was running the marathon? Anybody know? Y'all don't. Y'all don't say no. Yeah, oh, Jesus, of course. Yeah, Jesus is number one. Please, God. It was always Jesus. <laughs> A skunk. I'm out there, it's four in the morning, I'm by myself, you know, I'm doing my lonely thing. And all of a sudden I hear this, what the? <laughs> and this skunk rolls up on me, I go, dude, nah, -uh, bro. I, it, but he didn't come to spray me. He came to run with me. <laughs> and that little old thing, I'm telling you, several miles, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to outrun him, I just couldn't outrun him. <laughs> After all, I am old, you know. And I little thing, and I'd stop every now and then. He'd just look at me. So I'd, okay, we'll keep going. It's just awesome, y'all. 
It's just awesome. I had me a companion, a skunk. He said, skunk, dude, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? I have a companion. At least I have that. <laughs> it's so awesome. You know, I was wanting a glowing angel. Of course I was. One of them chariot things come by, you know, and pick you up for a little bit, take you for a ride so that your GPS is marking it, you know. <laughs> no, I get a skunk. But I have to go on record, thank you, God, for the skunk. Yeah. At least I had something to talk to. <laughs> I didn't talk back much, but I, that's all right. I bless y'all. Y'all hear me? I know it's bumpy out there, and I know there's skunks out there. I know this. I do know this. But my job, my job is to tell you, put your shoes on, go outside, and run anyway. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm right about this, y'all. This year... What are you training for? Thank y'all for caring and asking. I'm doing a thousand mile bike ride in September, October. Wow. Bicycle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What are you gonna do after that? Oh, thanks for asking. <laughs> I'm gonna start training for I'm gonna do between five hundred and eight hundred miles on the Appalachian Trail in the East Coast. I'm gonna walk it with a forty pound backpack. I'm doing it. Right here, you looking at it. Those are awesome goals, y'all. Yeah. You need to go. You need, you need to not worry about what hell's doing and worry about what God's doing. Keep yourself in shape. Keep yourself mental, physical, spiritual readiness. Right. We got this, hey? Yes, yeah. sir. It's okay if I give you a little encouragement, a little yeah. counsel along the trail here. Because it's working for us. Mm -hmm. It really is. Sure is. Shatalaba. My little great-grandson, he's, uh, what is he, he's not even two yet. He'll be two sometime or another. Miss Hogan's not here. I'll tell you when she gets here. But uh, sometime or another. And he's out there with us in the morning at 6 o'clock. He's out there. He's at the gym because we're cross-training now. We're doing the bike and the power walking in the gym. We're rotating every day. And every day, little boy's out there. Dude, he's, he's not even two. Yeah, well, look, what, look how you turned out. You want my grandson like you? What's the matter with you? <laughs> I'm a really good coach, can you tell? <laughs> we got this, hey? Come on. Come on now. Come on. Come on now. Jesus' name. I bless you. I mean it. I... I'm not, I, I am a, punching you up a little bit, but I, I really believe that, we, that everybody in this room can be successful regardless of how our environment is at the moment. It can turn if we will allow it to happen. Jeremiah 12 is an important verse for you for nowadays. There's another one in a minute. I didn't make it. I was going to try, but I didn't make it. So I'm gonna bless you and let him have this. And I'll wait with y'all for y'all. Let, let me gather up my goodies. Wasn't that awesome? You guys get encouraged?